Mendoza. Lord Jesus, you know where she's at. And by the authority of the word of God and the power of the name of Jesus, we declare that she will be found. Let her be found safe and sound in the name of the Lord. And take the spirit of fear and panic and anxiety away from this family. And I pray you comfort them right now with strength, Lord God. And God, let someone find this girl. In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor for what you're going to do right now. As we pray, you are hearing us. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. So thankful you're here. If you are part of the central region or the south region, we will have Zoom calls this weekend, uh, Saturday night at 730 for the central and Sunday night at 730 for the south as we prepare to make these regions larger and larger and larger. And if you are a part of those, please join. I will be talking to those two regions this weekend. Amen. All right. So we have a... Brother Andrew, do you have that graphic? You ha we have a, we're, we've started a fundraising committee, and Brother Cade Sorridge is over our fundraising committee, and he knows how to raise the money for the church, and we're thankful for that. He's got a ton of ideas. And, and let me back up, because tomorrow, I forgot to let you know, tomorrow I'm meeting the bishop of the church at 4 o'clock at their church for a meeting about the building. So we're believing that God's going to open the door tomorrow. Uh, me and Sister Herring and Pastor Andrew are meeting them at 4 o'clock. So please be in prayer for us tomorrow for this. And uh, But anyway, the Lord has blessed our building fund. We're, we believe we're ready to go into this dimension. But Brother Cade is also has, has a ton of ideas, a great businessman. So the first fundraising idea that he has, which we're going to start, and I believe it's already on the screen, so he has a car raffle we're going to do. He owns this car, as one of his family members does. And we're going to have, is it $100 tickets? 50 and 100 for three. And we're going to get as many tickets of these sold as possible in the next few weeks. They owe us, they owe us a little bit on it. They're going to take the first little percent and pay it off. And the rest is going to go to the building fund. And so we're going to see a great breakthrough in the building fund the next few weeks with just this fundraiser alone. So if you need a new car or uh, an FJ Cruiser, I don't know the information on 2008, how many miles does it have? 6,947,012. Oh, they're, they're made for five or 600,000. If you need a car, uh, go for it. I'm probably going to go for it. Pastor has entered 400 times. What in the world? So see Brother Cade after church tonight, and we'll announce it again Sunday, but we are going to get this thing going, and we're going to see the, the building fund go up. Amen. All right, I Am a Worshipper series, part one begins now. Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 10, and John chapter 9, verse 31. Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 10, and John chapter 9, and verse... 31. This is the story of Jesus and the devil in the wilderness. The devil taketh him up into exceeding high mountain, showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. John chapter 9 and verse 31 says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. I want to talk to you tonight about symptoms of worship. Symptoms of of worship. Lord Jesus, thank you for everybody that's here tonight. I pray that we'd have a great breakthrough. Thank you for 146 people that were here Sunday morning and four people baptized in your name and three filled with the Holy Ghost as revival has continued and continued and continued. Thank you that we're leaving this theater soon and going into a new building. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And somebody said in Jesus' name, you may be seated. 
I ordered a new pulpit. It should be in tomorrow, thank God, because this thing is straight up broken. They had a magic show in here last weekend, and somebody crawled through our storage, broke this, and broke this. Bless him, Jesus. With something. <laughs> Why is worship so important to Satan? He's in the wilderness with the Lord God, and he, he's tempted him two times before our text. He has watched Jesus fast 40 days, 40 nights, comes to him and says, if you really are the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. I've heard one preacher say that he did not think the devil was an actual figure in front of the Lord because how would that be tempting Jesus if a demon was right in front of him, but rather he was whispering him to him in the thoughts of his mind and was kind of going by him and just being invisible and speaking to him. But regardless, the first temptation was turn the stones into bread. If you really are God, prove it. Turn something into this and show, show me you're really powerful. And, and Jesus didn't do it. So the second temptation was he went up to the temple and he said, if, uh, if you'll jump off the temple, the angels will catch you. Doesn't your word say that? And, and Jesus didn't fall for that either. And so now the final act, the, the big one, the devil goes to the highest mountain possible. And, and you've got this amazing encounter of Jesus and Satan himself on the top of a very high peak. And Satan said, let me show you all the kingdoms of the world. If you read that, it's past, present, and future. He showed him every army, every military, every region, every powerful nation, every government, every president, every person, that, every king, every dictator, and said, all of this you can have if you will fall down and worship me. It's always been about worship to the devil. He's always craved it. Ever since he was an angel, he wanted worship. I'm going to be like the most high. And I'm going to be above the angels. And they're going to they're gonna bow before me because that's what I want. In the end times, the Bible says the people of the world will worship the beast. They'll worship the dragon. This is, the, this is who the devil is, and he will get people to worship him. That's been his motto his entire existence. I will be like the Most High. He will go to any length to get your worship. And that's when he comes to the Lord and said, I'll give you everything if you fall down and worship me all he wanted, all he cared about. If I get your worship, I've got you. No matter what serves you or who serves you, if I get your worship, everything beneath you is mine as well. He is consumed, I want you to get this, with the idea of being worshiped. Satan is consumed with the idea of being worshipped. If you were on Chosen last night, you heard us talk about this. If you weren't, you keep skipping, and I know your name. But anyway, we had a powerful conversation about how people are spiritual consumers or spiritually consumed. You either go shopping for God or you're consumed with him. There's something about people that either they want to see what it does for them. If the price is too high, I will not commit. Anytime people start letting me know they're going to skip church frequently, it lets me know they're spiritual consumers. They're not really committed. They're not really consumed because they're there shopping for what God can do for them. But when you are consumed, the word consume means to feel so strongly about something that it affects everything that you do. When something is consumed by fire, it's not the same structure as it was before the fire hit it. That's why you can be on fire and still look the same and act the same. But if you get consumed by God, everything about the old you dies and the new you is born. And Satan is consumed with it affects everything he does. The one request he had from God Almighty was worship me. What is worship? First of all, the physical posture of worship. In the Old Testament, the word worship means to bow down and to give reverence. In the New Testament, it means to bow down and kiss one's hand. You'll notice that in the other religions, People bow down 
as a symbol of worship. The Hindus bow before the statues. The Muslims pull their carpet out and bow at certain times of the day. This is loved by Satan, by the way. You know why the Muslims worship Allah, this, this deity that they think exists? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into this right now. This deity that they think is so powerful because they read about the writings of Muhammad, their prophet, who supposedly had an encounter with Gabriel. And he said, I am Gabriel. And Gabriel took him into a trance and took him to a temple where Moses was and where Abraham was and where other prophets were and where Jesus was. And it said that Muhammad led Jesus in a prayer. Oh, you didn't know that. But we're in school now, aren't we? And so they believed this, and they followed Muhammad because according to Muhammad, all these great ones bowed down and followed him. He didn't see Gabriel. He saw a demon. Angels transform. The devil transforms himself into an angel of light. But every day at the certain time of the day, they will bow down and they worship a deity that if it does exist, it's not God. It's a demon. I guarantee you, when you get to heaven, you'll find out that Allah was a demon, not an angel, and not a deity. And you can sit there all you want to on me. I don't care. I'm telling the truth right now, and I'm not afraid of it. We know the one true God, and his name is Jesus, and we should not be ashamed of that or ashamed of who he is or who we are. Well, it's no big deal. It's maybe no big to you, but you, but Satan is being worshipped by it. Satan loves worship. But worship is much more than one's physical posture bowing down. It says to kiss one's hand, which signifies that you give the words of your mouth to the command of a hand of another being. In other words, the words that you speak are just the beginning of worship. Your words are a form of submission. It is impossible to be in rebellion and to be a worshiper of God at the same time because when your words are submitted to something's hand, you will speak what the command is. And if the Lord is commanding you to do something, then your words will speak what he is saying. What he is commanding. Worship begins. The symptom of worship is your mouth. You speak something great. Everyone worships. Y'all get, get back there? Everyone worships something or someone. Everyone in this room is a worshiper. And most people worship themselves. It's quiet. Here we go. Everybody worships something. Whatever you're devoted to will get your worship. Nebuchadnezzar built a statue of himself and said, everybody, when you hear the sound of the music, bow down to the statue of me and worship my image. Most people look in the mirror more than they do the Bible each day. You, I'm talking to you. Yeah. You can't stop taking selfies, but you can't read your Bible because you worship yourself. Well, here I am in the backyard. Here I am in the front yard. Who cares where you are? Have you read your Bible? I don't think you have. You are worshiping yourself. <laughs> I don't have time to pray. Now take it again. That's a terror. You don't want to take pictures. Take it again. I'm sorry, I can't fix ugly. It's amazing how people are consumed with themselves. That's why they don't worship in church. How can you worship God and worship you in the same day? It's impossible. You have to choose Ashata, who your God is. You have to worship him or worship you, and you can't do the same. You've got to do one or the other. 
image worshiping is real. Revelation 15 and Revelation 16. Read those two chapters. In the last days, people will be worshiping the image of the beast. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse number 8 says, Their land also is full of idols, and they worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. People either worship themselves or they worship the work they've done. I built that. I did that. It's quiet, okay. Golden calf. They didn't just build it. They worshiped it. That's what God told Moses. They didn't just make a golden calf. They worshiped it. It, it, They they started praising the works of their own hands. And anytime you start worshiping yourself for what God's given you the ability to do, you've forgotten who the creator is, and you're praising creation instead of creation. If you get the raise, you didn't earn it. God gave it to you. If you get the position, God gave it to you. If we get the building, God gave it to us. God is the one who gets the glory for what happens in our life. Why are you doing a series on worship? We're we're having powerful Sundays. We are. We are having powerful Sundays lately. We're explosive atmospheres, but we got too many people spectating in our explosive atmospheres that are just watching and being entertained by that. So you've got to be a worshiper if you're going to survive in this type of church. You cannot spectate your entire life and be a part. You will eventually fade, and you will eventually be left behind because you can't stay in a worshiping atmosphere with a non-worshipping attitude. Oh, I feel a spirit of rebellion right now. It doesn't matter. I'm coming against that spirit, that human attitude that says I don't have to worship. Then you can just leave and not come back because there's an attitude behind that. I command that spirit to leave. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, I will not take that in this house. We are apostolic, Holy Ghost-filled Pentecostals, and God has given us revival, and we are not ashamed of what the Lord has done. I don't expect our guests to worship. I don't expect our newcomers to know anything. But our people who have lived for God, they know when I'm in the presence of God, I am a worshiper. I am a praiser. I am dedicated to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he... If Satan cannot get us to worship him, he will get us to worship ourselves. He doesn't care where the worship goes as long as it doesn't go to God. The reason he he knows that once an individual stops worshiping God, they can no longer hear God's voice, and God no longer hears theirs. John chapter 9, verse 31. The Bible says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners. The word sinners there means someone devoted to sin. Someone not repenting. Someone not wanting to change. Someone saying, I will not, I'm not doing anything they say. I'm going to live my life and keep doing my sins. God cannot hear that person. But it's not just that person God can't hear. He says he, he hears worshipers that do his will. So if you can be a worshiper and not do his will, and guess what? He's not hearing you. Oh, that's quiet. Okay. What does that mean? That means you can worship him in church, but if you're not obeying his will outside of church, he's not hearing a thing you say because he knows what he's told you to do, and you're not obeying it, so he's not listening to you. A symptom of being a true worshiper is you obey his will. 
if I'm praising him, Brother Alisaia, and I'm worshiping him, but I'm not doing what he's telling me to do, he is turning a deaf ear to me. And then we say things like this. Why aren't my prayers being answered? Maybe because we're worshiping something besides God. And he said, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Am I worshiping God or am I worshiping my phone? Am I worshiping God or my image? He's not interested in partial praise or I give you most of me. He is a consuming fire. He wants to take over everything that belongs to him. That spirit that says, I don't have to praise him. I don't have to worship him. It's okay if it's from the world because they don't understand. But when a child of God has been filled with the spirit, washed with his blood, delivered from their past, there's something wrong. When someone says, I don't have to worship him, I don't have to either. I get to worship him. I get to bless him. I get to praise him. I get to lift my hands. I get to lift my voice. Oh, I'm in war. I feel the Holy Ghost. There's a warfare going on in here. This will be a worshiping church. This is the last thing I do. We're going to have a worshiping atmosphere. It's going to happen. It's going to Don't wait to be involved to be a worshiper. Don't wait for the altar call. Don't wait for the preaching. I like it when people come to the front and start worshiping God with the sing. The singers should not, I'm just going to, I'm going to say, they shouldn't have to cheerlead us to get to the right point where we feel like clapping and I finally feel like saying something. I don't feel like saying anything, but it's not about my feelings. It's about the fact that he's worthy. And if somebody else is praising him, let me join them because my Bible says let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm there in the midst of them. You're going to worship something. Jesus, yourself, the devil, pride. Well, there's some pride in here. I refuse. Why do you come if you refuse to be a praiser? I'll tell you why. To get attention. To make a scene. Because you want attention. That's why you're doing that. And I'm not, I'm not playing games with you tonight. I'm telling you, this is too big of an atmosphere for you to survive in with that type of attitude. We didn't come to watch you. We came to praise him. We came to bless him. We came to worship him. In this room right now, there are demonic spirits in here tonight. And they showed up because there's a worshiping series coming on. And hell hates it when people get the revelation that God deserves my worship. And God deserves my praise. And God deserves everything I can give. Hell hates it. That's why whether you're feeling it or not, there's days I'm sick as a dog, but I'm going to dance every single service just to let the enemy know my worship still goes to God. My praise still goes to Jesus. My adoration still goes to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's too good to me. He's too amazing to me. He's too wonderful to me. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And the angel said, holy, holy is the Lord. The angels worship him, so I will worship him.
That's called giving God a standing ovation. Every time you clap your hands and you're standing in the house of God, you're giving him a standing ovation. David said, oh, clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. He's been so wonderful. He's the counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And he loves you. I said he loves you. I said he died for you. He died for me. Let's go a little further. If it was Sunday, I would let it explode, but I want you to get this. I want you to go home with this. Matthew 4, verse 10. Jesus' response to the devil. He said, get the ends, get out of here. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Serving is attached to worship. There we go. Servants are always worshipers, and worshipers are always servants. And if you can't serve, I don't trust your worship. Because if you are a worshiper, something about you wants to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Servants, servants realize that lifting my hands is the least I can do. That lifting my voice is the least I can do. That's just a given when I've... There are some people in this room that I'm so thankful for every time you walk in because there's not been one service where you have not been a worshiper. Brother Drew and Sister Ava, every service are on their feet every time. I want people like that, that worship God. Give me a house full of people that know how to worship God. Give me people that are not ashamed and not afraid. We've got to be praisers. We've got to be worshipers. He's been too good. Well, I don't want the guests to feel uncomfortable. I do. That's why they're here. Their life is uncomfortable, and they're looking for something different because what they've been to is not helping them. So they're trying to find something. And if you're worried about him, they'll leave saying that church is the same as every other church. But if you're not ashamed to praise him and worship him, they'll know something's different about that church. Ah, they serve. They serve. It's a symptom of being a worshiper. They don't hold back. They find things to do. I want my favorite thing about Brother Bushmeyer is he's always finding something to do. He doesn't wait on me to, hey, yeah. he's finding something to do. I like that. I like people that are saying, I'm not just here for church. I am the church. I'm here to do and be what I'm supposed to do and supposed to be. It's not. The consumer says, yeah. We have to be at church three times this week. You just identified who everything about you to me, and I'll never be connected with you because that attitude is I'm going to pay a little bit of a price, and once it gets too high, I'm going to complain, and I'm going to back away. Consumers never go all in. Oh, it's quiet. Waiting on a better deal. You know how some of you shoppers are. It's like, if I can get it at Target for it. Five cents cheaper. I'll drive 43 miles and waste four dollars of gas so I can get it five cents cheaper. That's what a consumer does. Where can I get it? What what can I get for me? What kind of deal can I get? People come to church with that mentality. That's why church shoppers end up always being church hoppers. Because no matter what, when commitment shows up, they don't nah. will you be here Wednesday? I'm working on it. No, 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 no. You're shopping. Let's just be real. You're shopping. You're test driving our church. Be careful because we aren't letting you test drive it. Jesus drives our church. 
So you may not like not being in control. You may not like not being, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to run you off. I love you. But I'm not after consumers. I want the consumed. Whatever I've got to do, God. I want to be all in. I'm almost done. Genesis 22, verse 5. The first time worship is ever mentioned in your Bible, it's worship, worship or worshiping or worshipers or worship 176 times in your Bible. This is the first time it's mentioned. Abraham's about to take his boy to the mountain to kill him. And Abraham said unto his young men, abide here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship. He's been told by God to kill his kid, and he calls it worship. Here we go. He said, taking my kid to the altar is the greatest way I can worship him. Mm. Oh, it's quiet. (laughs) Giving my family to God is the greatest way I can worship him. Worship cannot just be taught. It must be lived. If you're looking for a reason every three weeks to skip church, and well, I'm just going to do this. Listen, you, your family is going to be lost. You need to get all the way in to where my family is going to be on the altar if it's the last thing I do. Let's stay standing. Real worship lays it all down. Real worship sees sacrifice as an opportunity. Real worship goes all the way. If somebody's a real worshiper, get out of their way. Because when you stop the commitment, they'll keep going. They'll bring you to the altar with them. Real worshipers don't stop short of the altar. They... They do whatever they have to do to worship God. See, anybody can praise when things are good. With money's in the bank account, hell yeah, thank the Lord, so good. But worshipers, they show up when they're bleeding. They show up when there's no money in the bank account. They raise their hands when the pain is in their arms, but they don't care because God's worthy. Real worshipers don't find reasons to skip church every week. Real worshipers say, I have got to be there. Abraham said, when my family sacrifices, we call it worship. Do I call my sacrifice sacrifice or do I call it worship? Do I say, oh, it's just to my God's making me do or I get to do this? Real worship doesn't stop until God makes it stop. Real worshiper grabbed the knife and said, it's going to hurt me. And God said, stop But Abraham had such a made-up mind that if God said, worship him, then I don't stop until he says stop. They tell me in the Crusades of Madagascar they have every year that they tell the American preachers, whatever you do when you take the pulpit, don't say praise the Lord, everybody. Because as soon as you say praise the Lord, everybody, it'll be two to three hours before we can stop them. Because they assume when you say praise the Lord, they're supposed to praise the Lord. In America, if we, and, and you're doing great, thank you for coming. If we don't have a piano player on the altar call, if pastor isn't Pump it, pump it, pump it, pump it. I can hear it in prayer meeting. I'll go for 20 minutes and not breathe. Second, I go. Shh. 
we're almost like looking for a break from worship. We look for a chance to, oh, chill. Let me chill. God understands. I don't know. He didn't chill when he was at the whipping post for me. He didn't chill at the cross for me. And he's not chilling in heaven making my mansion for me. And he's not chilling coming back for me. I don't know. Don't be, a, don't be afraid to lift up your voice in the car, in the house. Mom and dad, the kids should hear you lifting up your voice. Oh, sure. I don't mind at all. I'm up early praying, and one of my kids wakes up, comes out in the living room. It doesn't bother me. I want them to hear. I want them to hear Dad praying in the early morning hours. I want my family to be worshipers. How can they worship if I don't take them to the altar? How can they make it if I'm not faithful? How can I expect my kid to pray through if I'm never there? It's not going to happen. I've got to get to the point where God is first in my life. He's first. He's first. I know sometimes you have to work and we have to miss church. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, well, my head hurts. I guarantee there's 45 people heads hurting here. Well, my back hurts. And I get that. Sometimes if you have something crazy going, but I'm talking about just finding a reason to skip. You're a consumer. No, 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 no. I want it to be that if, if I'm not here, you think something's wrong. Some people, if they're not here, I think something's wrong. I'm just being honest. Some people, I'm like, they're always here. And if, I, and if, they, if, they, if, I'm not, if, if they're not here, they let me know. So when they're not here and I haven't heard from them, I'm, I'm troubled. Because they're worshipers. They're worshipers. They're consumed. When's the last time you prayed till nothing else mattered? But being consumed by him. Let's lift up our hands right now and let's step into worship. Somebody kiss the hand of God. When's the last time you didn't care? I just want to give it all to the Lord. I, I need a change. I, I need a breakthrough. I, I need an answer. I need, I know I'm preaching hard tonight, but I, I'm warring for a worshiping atmosphere. I, I, don't mean, I don't mean to make everyone uncomfortable unless unless you're carnal, then I want you uncomfortable because the worshiping atmosphere demands me to engage it. And if I don't engage it, it will run me over eventually because the atmosphere is being set. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. <laughs> Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. <laughs> Lift up your heads, O ye gates. He hears you. If you're trying to do his will and you're worshiping, he hears you. You're trying to make it. He hears you. He hears you. He hears you.
Can he hear your voice right now? Can he hear your family? Where are you, Abraham? One thing we know about him, he was the first worshiper. Abraham worshiped like nobody did. Abraham would go to whatever level he had to go to to obey God. That's a worshiper. That's a worshiper. No matter what it costs me, he's been too good to me. Symptoms of worship, servanthood, submission, speaking, signs you're a worshiper. You speak with your mouth. You submit to the Lord, the word of the Lord, and you serve. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And the devil couldn't stay in a in wilderness. Had to run away. Because Jesus said, my worship's not for sale. In fact, he said, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Not only am I not worshiping you, but you're going to worship me. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and every tongue shall. I'll close with this, and I've told this before. I've told this before, but in case you weren't here that service, that's why when Satan entered into Judas, Judas walked up to Jesus, possessed with Satan, and kissed his cheek, not his hand. He was saying, I refuse to worship you. We're equal. It was a declaration of war from hell. I'm not worshiping you. Shouldn't have done that. Because when he was in the tomb, he left and went down to the prisons and preached to the spirits and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Should have worshipped. Now I got the keys to your house. Anybody you've got in your house, I can get out of there. I can deliver them. I can rescue them. I can save them. Do yourself a favor. Make it known you're a worshiper of the Lord. Your boss should know you're a worshiper. Your family should know you're a worshiper. Your classmates should know you're a worshiper. Yes, they should. And your church should know you're a worshiper. We have two more of these Wednesday nights. We just explain what worship is tonight. We're going to get into it the next couple weeks. But make up your mind, I'm going to worship Jesus. I'm going to give my life. I'm going to obey obey his will. I'm going to submit to his word. I'm going to be a servant. I'm going to be there. Why? Because he hears worshipers. He hears them. Last prayer. Jesus, I love you. And I worship you. I thank you for every worshiper in this room. For the Father seeketh such to worship him, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God, we've got both. So we are true worshipers. And God, we want to give you all of our heart, soul, mind, and life. God, we have warred for tomorrow's meeting. We have worshiped, we have prayed, we have fasted, we have wept. And the meeting happens tomorrow. I worship you for the victory you're about to give our people. I worship you 
for the breakthrough you're about to give Revival Tabernacle. I worship you. I give you all the glory. I was praying this morning, and I said, God, I was praying over the meeting, and I said, God, you dwell outside of time. You know what's going to happen in the meeting. He said to me, I've already been to the meeting. I said, can you let me know what happened? He said, keep praying. He's, He's already been there. God's got us. God's got us. Amen. Amen. I want you to be a worshiper. Make it, make it your mission. Make every atmosphere powerful. I told our leaders Sunday night, I want them to be in the front praying before church on Sunday mornings. I appreciate tonight, several of you are up front tonight worshiping. It is so much easier to preach when the atmosphere is set before the service with worship Versus talking and laughing and joking. When there's something in the room, it's easy. It's easy for the singers. It's easy for the, everyone. It's easy for everyone that comes as a guest to feel God. When worship, worship takes the chains off. It just sets, it's, it sets the atmosphere. I encourage us Sunday morning, if you get here five minutes early, ten minutes early, twenty minutes early, let's be a worshiper. Watch what happens Sunday. I love you.